Hey, what's up? You just found the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast anywhere. This is Mind Pump. All right, I got a giveaway for you that you're going to love. So in today's episode, in the intro, you hear us talk about bullies, and we actually debate a little bit as to whether or not bullies have a little bit of value. So here's what I want you to do. In the comments below, in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, tell us if you think bullies have a little bit of value or if bullies have zero value. Tell us in the comments. If we pick your comment, if we think your comment is the best one, guess what's going to happen? You're going to get a free MAPS anabolic program. You know what that means? It means you're going to get buffed, sexy, and amazing looking. Okay, so leave a comment. By the way, turn on your notifications, subscribe to this channel. We give away stuff all the time. In fact, on every episode, we give something away, but only if you comment in the first 24 hours. How are you going to know that? Unless you turn on your notifications. Also, we're running a huge promotion before we start this podcast. 50% off sale, MAPS Anabolic, and the Shredded Summer Bundle. All 50% off. Go check them out at mapsfitnessproducts.com. And the coupon code, let me check that coupon. Oh, April Special. That's the one. April Special gives you that discount. All right, enjoy the podcast. Speaking of movies from the, uh, it must have been the 80s, right? Are we on? We're on, dude. We're on oh, we're on oh, we are. now. Oh, okay. This is good time. I'm either. over here sexting with are you? my, my wife. Are you here. really? Well, no. Tell her I said hi. No. She's, she's, going she's it. got pulled over right now. So. Uh, they gave, uh, gave her a, a ticket and a fix a ticket. I tell you. Going wait, over, both? Why? Wow, they were yeah. in a mood today. Yeah. Well, I, she, got, she got pulled over for uh, a 60 and a 50. That's like that's weak. I, that's Come way, on, dude. And it's I know it's over the Santa Cruz area over there. That I, I yeah, try they, I try to tell they her crack to, down to turn times. the Waze app on. Yeah, you got to use the way. I know it's like annoying when you're going somewhere you already know, but like I I put it on always now. Do you remember the days of the uh, radar detectors? Yeah, that's still all around. I had one in my car, uh, Cobra. Really? Yeah, I remember the Cobra one. You had a Cobra or uh -huh. the, the the actual the thing. So you stuck it on your dash. You stick it on your, your dash, and it picks up X. Radar and some other ones, right? To scramble the signal. No, those are the no, illegal that, ones. No, those are illegal no, ones. No, yeah, yeah. Scrambler is illegal. But the one I had picks up signals. But the problem is, is every motion sensor detected door in grocery stores, every whatever, sets it off. Oh, really? Yeah, because they use that kind of. Oh, radar. that's annoying. Yeah, so you drive by a grocery, it's like beep 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 beep. Oh, yeah. you turn it off. And then the problem is that police, they, for a long time now, they've been doing this. But right when these radars became popular, these radar detectors. They started using the when they would test your speed. The old ones used to fire a continual signal that you could pick up. But then they got the ones where they push the button, and then that's the only time you could pick it up. So by the time you go beep beep, he already got you. Oh, like, ah, I, got oh, I thought it would oh. read it over. Like so, I mean, I I thought you could get, pick up on it if you're shooting someone else. Yeah, way ahead. Maybe I think it can. Did, you, did it ever save you from tickets? Did you ever see it and go ah, so smoky. You know, I, I had one, but I didn't have a very good one, dude. I, I had one when I was a kid, and I don't even remember the brand. It wasn't the brand you were talking about, which I don't... Was it Viper? Is, did Viper make one? Or were they just a long... So I had Cobra. I, I thought yeah, I had Cobra. That was a security company. You put the, like, the low jack. Yeah, I thought they also did the, 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 the radar detectors, Maybe. too. Yeah, yeah. could could have. Mine was... My, I don't know. It was hard to tell if mine ever really saved me or helped me. Waze is incredible. Waze uh, has saved me already. Waze like, oh, yeah. is a whole nother level. Yeah, because People they... are give, literally telling they you. Give you. They give you a half a mile before you even get to the... Yep. Well, you could actually technically see where he is at miles ahead. Like, I can see it on the, yeah. the map. And then it alerts me when I'm a half a mile away. And so, accidents are pretty accurate, like right away too. Oh, there you go. When it go, when it comes to like navigation, yeah, it's, it's, it's I never that saved me. Remember when like there was it was a big storm and I was trying to go over 17 and a, a tree had fallen down and I had like I was maybe I don't know 10 minutes away from like the actual like tree that had fallen and somebody had put that on there and I was able to navigate around it and make it home. Everybody else was there for like hours. Wow. Dude. Yeah. Wow, and it's all it's all uh, it's like a, it's social media, right? Yeah, yeah. It's all social. Everybody media. contributes. To People it. report. I actually I like so I never use. See, that's it. when humanity makes. I have hope. Like, oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know it's cool. What I, and this I love. This is in such a great example of like free markets right here. Like no one's telling me that I have to contribute, but I feel compelled to because it's already helped me so much. Yeah. yeah. So like now, like if I, so, I keep it up on my on the TV monitor in the cars, right? And it's really easy. Like uh, there's a little uh, I don't even know what icon that you just hit, and then it pulls up all the options: traffic, crash, cop, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And you just hit it real quick on the TV screen, and then just you report, and then it automatically uploads. And they, I haven't figured out like Waze gives you credit and points. I don't know what I can do with that. 
yet. Yeah, is that just it's, yeah. okay? But the more I can contribute, the more they give me these points. I don't know. What now, does that I mean do. just give you <laughs> I don't know. clout on ways? Ways bucks. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah, you get to go to some casino and you know. Yeah, really I'm sure somebody listening right now who do knows way more about ways and uh, than I do will hopefully probably DM me and, and you could buy me. a new skin for your face. On there, whatever, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right? No, I don't know. I don't know what they do, but I mean, just because it's helped me so much, I is it so you get points if I'm not mistaken. I haven't used it in a while. You if you say oh there's a cop here and then people see what you said yep. and then they'll say he's there yeah thank you yes boom point and mm -hmm. if you confirm like so when you go I always ask every time you pass either an accident or a cop car you know they, they ask you to confirm is he still there or not yeah. if you can confirm it or say he's left like you get points for that Bro, too. speeding tickets are the biggest racket i'm gonna oh, say it right now the biggest racket it's always the end of the month or very beginning of the month you know one or two that's like oh my god we need some revenue it's pure bullshit yeah. here's my here's why someone listening it's like, the old well someone like no you can't speed because then you you might hurt someone and you crash you job security dude no i get like i get that right yes going faster is more dangerous okay if they really gave a shit, every car would have governors. No car would go faster than the speed limit. Right. That's yeah. all. Yeah. yeah. Every car would. would but I would, could go. I buy a piece of shit car. It goes 100 miles an hour. Why is it going 100 miles an hour? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because no one will buy it. Because you can. Because yeah. you can. Yeah. yeah. No, Absolutely. No. Who goes the speed limit? All right. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't I want to try something with you guys really quick. This is like a an uh, experiment. not again, dude. Last time we did this, got oh, it's it, it's not gonna be weird. I mean, it might be a little bit weird. Turn but, the lights okay, out. Okay. So remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Am I touching you? Apparently, this doesn't work. So I. I'm curious to see if it does. I haven't okay. actually tried it. So what you got to do is kind of plug your nose. What? Are we supposed to follow Do it right now. Are yeah, you going to Plug fart? your nose. Yeah, yeah plug oh, your okay. nose. Okay. I hate my nose being Yeah, right now it's dry because we're in the air. Yeah, okay, yeah. Now, you have, now you have to try and hum. No, you can't. The air has to come oh, out yeah. of your nose, dude. It's impossible. Yeah, the yeah. air has... It's a new thing I learned today. Wow. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so lame. I thought dude, it was going to go a lot better. <laughs> you want to, You just reminded me of some douchey shit from, uh, from junior oh, high. So, oh, great. Okay, everybody, forgive me. This was the 90s, and uh, it was just this what we did. And do you remember this one right here where you tell a girl... Uh, nobody could touch their elbows behind their back. Remember that? Uh, did you guys do stupid shit like no, that? I don't remember that. So they're like, uh, they we did the one where they stick their like, chest out. And oh like, my uh, god, bro, it was it's so douchey. Just... Everybody, it was the thing, dude. Uh, everybody did that. And we, you give me we shit did the with gives me shit for my hoop ring and my fucking hip <laughs> necklace. You're over here making girls. He's holding out, stick dude. Their titties out. Bro, yeah. get out. Hey, listen. It was like everybody. It was like a joke. Everybody did. It was the '90s. He's hiding his old douche. And I'm, you know, here's totally. And here's the deal, dude. I have kids. I have a daughter. If some fucker did that to my daughter, he would get. Drop kicked immediately. Uh, right. I don't care how old these right, kid is. Right, yeah. I remember that one. The the one that we used to do a lot was um, the quarter trick, right? Where you would. Oh, yeah. I love this one. Yeah, you you you'd, you'd color the outside of it with like a heavy amount of either just half of it. Let, it's a pencil. Yeah, pencil. pencil. You go half. You go half, or you do the full thing, which they didn't. They didn't really check that, you uh, know, because you so put can it you on roll the head. this from your. Can head? you roll this from from the top of your head down to through so your nose? So you, I would always do half. And I, I show them, can you do this? And without, nothing was there. Yeah, nothing was there. Uh, and then you hand it to them, and there's, I mean, it's half so there. You know where the best pranks come from? Yeah, if they uh, didn't trust you. Yeah, yeah. I guess that yeah. makes sense. <laughs> you know, yeah. the, the best pranks come from construction workers. If you work with construction workers, these guys, one of my favorites is this. Like, whenever my dad would have a work site and they'd have a new guy on, on or whatever, they would always say, hey, can you lift this bag of cement ab above your head? You know, when oh, one try. guy comes behind, so him, he goes like this, he, right? Razor so blades it open. Yeah, so then someone behind him with the, with the trowel goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so fucked uh, up, yeah, dude. Yeah, it messed up. And you're covered in like you know what? That, powdered cement. I love these conversations. Remind we uh, we. I got a bunch of messages because we talk about obviously Netflix shows. You know, like the number one trending show right now on Netflix is that uh, Bad Trips. We should watch that today. What is oh, that? really? It's all about pranks. Oh, I mean, it's like it's a movie, and it's all about like all these great pranks that people do. Okay, and oh, I I, I, a couple of people messaged me and said like we, we would like it. So oh yeah, we we grew up with this. a ton of pranks, man. I mean, we carried that into college and everything. It's like you just get bored. You, you can't do it at school anymore, though, right? That's like a that's oh, bullying yeah. now, right? Sure, it, <laughs> I know. No, some, really, some, some kind of microaggression. Who knows? Yeah, no, yeah. it is right. I mean, if if a kid were to do some any of these things that we're talking about right now, you get that's like suspension. I, right? So you know, it's funny. Oh, I I'm get, sure I get the bullying. I hated bullies as a kid. In fact, every fight I ever got into was with a bully and what you, they weren't bullying me they were bullying other people and I would I hated it I couldn't stand it right so there's bullying but then there's like fucking with each other and pranks and testing each other and I feel like there's that's an important yeah but the problem with it, that, I feel like it's coming of age well, stuff. The, the problem, you know, the problem like, with that is it's a fine line you're right you yeah, have to know that that's that, there's a that's fine, what you find out a fine, <laughs> like, yes, there's a fine line and you're asking uh, teenage boys to manage that line. Yeah. So but, that's that's. But here's the deal. Here's my argument for that. Okay. 
in life, life requires you to have the, to understand lines, to understand how to navigate. You learn it as a teenager. What's the worst thing that happened? Oh, do anything, don't do anything terrible. What's the worst thing that happened? You tease your friend mm -hmm. and you realize, oh, he's one of those that can't handle it, so I'm not going to do it anymore, right? Right. You learn that as a kid. Then you get in the workplace mm -hmm. and you have better, I guess, social skills. Yeah. You know? Well, not, to mention, not to mention that, but I also think that uh, the bully always gets what, gets what he deserves anyways. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know about you guys, but most of the guys that I know that were assholes <laughs> When we were growing up, just they don't make it very well no. In, no. in adulthood. No. The, the real world is not kind to them. They're not kind to that. No, person. they end up terrible. It, 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 you, one of the number one skills, if I could teach anything to my kids, it's how to be to be liked, likable. Yes, mm -hmm. and everybody hates a bully, and he might he might rule the world from you know fourth grade to fucking tenth grade or some shit. Yep. Yeah, but after that, that you don't get very far Nothing. being a person well, like the, that. The worst is when you know the the, the person that was being punked by the bully the, turns into you know the the same person that they were uh, fighting yeah. growing up you know well, that's, the, that happens a lot the, the power you know they, they all of a sudden come into this power and, and remember uh all these old feelings that they had that they hated yeah. you know growing up with and it's like uh, you hate to see that repeat itself yeah you do but i mean the testing part with friends is i don't know i used to always enjoy it now it definitely can escalate <laughs> yeah um but it's it's it, also, it almost it, always escalates. it's healthy though man we, it's like you know to an extent i lost I lost a, a best friend. <laughs> well, you guys went crazy. I heard some of the shit you guys. Yeah, heard. well, we, I mean, we uh, here, here. Here's the the part. Like, there, I, I don't know. This is why I say it's such a fine line because um, a lot of what. So, with my original like childhood best friends. We go back to elementary school, um, and we all played sports and and played video games, and we were extremely competitive. And that's that's what really we were very different. Came from different walks of life. weren't always into all the same things, but this is that was the glue in our friendship. And we remained competitive our entire uh, into adulthood. Yeah. And when you become an adult, I, I think there there becomes this. You start to evaluate the circle of people you hang around, and you don't want the friend who's who it, thinks it's funny to always put you down. Yeah. That used to put you like be in like cut because cut lows and jokes like that yeah. was. But when you become a 27 year old man and you're working hard for your job and you get your first promotion, it's not like the friends that you're looking for now are ones that are going to celebrate your wins with you and support you. Not the ones that are going to be competitive with you still and try and put you down. No, and th But here's my point with that. You learned. Yes. That. You, you learned, learned who that. are valuable friends because of that asshole and, in the group. And not just that, but you learned the line because we fuck with each other all the time. Right. But but it's not it's it's positive right there's definitely a way it could be negative like if it's just constantly getting ragged on you're like ah yeah i don't really like the energy you know it's not that fun or whatever mm -hmm. so there's definitely a line but i think it's an important part of you know being friends you know yeah. what i mean well now how do, i mean how do you guys because you guys are obviously raising uh boys right now in this time I, it's girls too right this isn't this isn't uh, one sex it's uh bullies and both yeah D different so, though a little different i know as you say different it. conversations in yeah. different ways that they do it right I mean, uh, have you guys had to deal with that? And do you kind of uh, allow your kids to uh, be bullied a little bit and absorb that and talk them through it? Or do you, are they being sheltered so much from that because of the schools? You know, the there's no physical. My son has not experienced or seen physical, mm -hmm. maybe a little bit, but not much. So it's way different than when I was a kid. When I was a kid, bullying was could be very physical, right? Yeah. They don't see that much. But I think where he's learning how to navigate that is how our, my relationship is with him. And how he sees my relationship is with my friends. So he sees us mess around, but he sees that there's a line that we kind of don't cross, right? Mm -hmm. So he's like that with his friends. I told you guys a story. Now, are you assuming that, or do you guys actually have conversations? We had we had some good conversations. Okay, because that's what I'm like. That's that's a. I mean, because he's learning. He's right? a very smart boy, so maybe he's that perceptive. But I feel mm -hmm. like I, he's smart, but he but you have to learn this stuff because yeah, you go too that's, far. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if yeah. he would pick up on that. So he'll he'll send me memes, and sometimes the memes are like, "Whoa, dude, this is dark," and I, and, I'll, and so I'll tell. <laughs> Tell him, yeah. I'll say, hey, look, you know me, and I find this hilarious. I said, but be very careful who you joke around with or send these things to because not everybody's going to be that way. You make sure you know it's the right person, mm -hmm. and you got to be very careful because it could really backfire. Yeah. Um, there's some people that are okay and some people that are not, and you need to know that. 
It's and it's it's up to you to discern that. That's life. Yeah, I mean, it, I've been going through this quite a bit with my oldest uh, because there's just been certain uh, interactions and relationships he's had with different friends or different kids that aren't his friends that he doesn't really like and doesn't like to be around. And you know, like the 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 climate today is like everybody just has to like each other. We all have to be friends, and uh, I'm like, you don't have to be friends with everybody. That's not like something that's realistic. Uh, but you got to be uh, cordial and you got to be, be kind. nice and, yeah. and kind. It has to come from you. Like, you, you know, and like, and if you, if you don't want to play or you don't want to uh, do something, you know, you just be very nice and say, well, you know, thank you for the offer or whatever, but I'm actually going to go over here and play with my friends, uh, you know? And so he's had to have interactions like that quite a bit with, with some kids that annoy the shit out of him. Uh, and, and, you know, on top of that, it's like, so um, basically like, a lot of these conversations that that keep coming up, uh, you know, with him, where he, where where it's like uh, he's having he's having like interactions with his friends online, all the stuff they're razzing each other. Like he just got interested in girls, and so they're kind of razzing him about girls. Like there's a big difference between razzing and, and really like being mean spirited yeah. about it towards you. And so he's he's figuring that out because at first he's like they keep making fun of me, you know, for having a girlfriend. I'm like, dude, that's just your friends. That's just right. what happens. Yeah, yeah, you know. So it's interesting to see him trying to figure that out. So right you now. guys do have conversations, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. how have you are you have you guys been on the other end of catching one of your kids potentially bullying somebody else or going too far with their friends and you've had to rein them in? I, no, but I did have a conversation with my daughter because, so with girls, it's a little bit different. You know when I first noticed this, by the way? When they were really little. When they were really little. Well, really? My, dude, okay. So my son, it must have been preschool or kindergarten. So he's like four or five, right? And he's on the he's playing in the playground. And I'm, I'm just, this is my first kid. You know, I'm watching these kids totally different now as a, as a father. And I see the little boys running around and one kid pushes another kid and the little boy cries or whatever, gets up and then, you know, they come over, dust them off and then they're okay and they're playing with her. And then I'm watching the girls and some of them are running around, but then I noticed like there's these, there was these three girls and they were like huddled and talking. And then this other girl came over and they were talking about her. She comes mm. over and all three of them dispersed ignored her oh wow we're not mm -hmm. gonna play with and they were in kindergarten yeah i was like oh my gosh this is very different wow this is very young? Yeah, no, it's early, yes dude yes crazy yeah so so my daughter's had situations like that where she'll get in a fight with one of her friends this is this is the thing too it, typically like you don't hear from your boy that he got in a fight with his friend if he did it's a physical fight you don't hear like we got in a big argument. It's this big drama. And now my other friends are taking sides. And this is what happened with my daughter. Like, I got in a fight with so-and-so. Well, what happened? Well, she said this. I said that. Then my other friend came, took her side. But then this other girl was on my side. I'm like, oh, my gosh. This is really complex. <laughs> this is really complex. Sounds like, I can't do this. Wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Talk to your mom. Yeah. No, I'm. so I'm just telling her. I'm like, yeah. So I'm like, listen, be kind. Always be the better, try to be the better person. And my, mm -hmm. my daughter's very assertive. She can be very, very assertive. So I said, also be nice. I said, I yeah. know how you can, you know, you can assert yourself. That's okay. Be strong, but also be nice, be kind. So we've had those conversations, yeah, yeah. but it is interesting. Well, yeah. Again, back to this kid that was kind of pestering Ethan quite a bit. Like it's, it's been, it's been a battle because he'll go through phases where he wants to be mean, you know, back and like, like talk trash about him to like, I'm like, so whatever you put out, that's mean, you know, just be ready to get that coming right back at you. Pay the consequences. Yeah. It, it, you know? And so that's a conversation we've had to have a few times. And I'm like, I understand you're frustrated. And I understand that, you know, this is, this is a hard to deal with, like, because you have to confront this. Uh, but whatever kind of mean spirited energy you put in that direction, you're going to receive that back. You know, this is like the, one of the biggest hurdles. My, my best friend who's the principal says that they have to, to deal with mm. because it's so it's in it's different today like right if i if i really don't like somebody who's like really like bullying me or making fun of me or something yeah. like that like you had back in the days you had to go like face them or avoid them it was That's like it. those are your options yeah, yeah. either else. you face it or you avoid it completely where now there with social media and the, it, it everybody owning everywhere. a cell phone like there's yeah. lots of ways to attack each other without having having to really like step up and attack somebody you yep. know what i'm saying like yep. so mm -hmm. that's a, a lot of stuff that happens is people sharing like 
you know, a, a photo of someone where they doctor it up, that's a big deal, yeah. right? So, like, there's let's say there's yeah. a kid you don't like, and instead of, like... Yeah, make him look like a pig or something. Yeah, exactly. Do something, like, catch him eating his sandwich at lunch, and then car cartoon figure his face and do something like that and put something mean and then send it to everybody or yeah. post it, like... Here's the worst part crazy. of it all. That, and this, you're right, it's just totally new territory, is, you know, when, when I went out with, well, off with my friends and we did stupid shit and said stupid shit and whatever... At the worst, people would tell the story about it. Oh, Sal, blah, 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 or this guy. But there were no pictures. Yeah, there, there was, was no a, documentation. There was a record of it. No, now. Yeah, thank God. And let me, exact, exactly. I mean, I did a lot of stupid shit. Yeah. Everybody does, right? Now there could be a picture. Yeah. And and there was actually, there was a website. What's that uh, something winery, something mountain winery that people go do concerts? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Not winery. Not winery. Mountain winery. Okay. There's this website where it's literally, or this page or whatever, where it's pictures of kids and i say kids they're in their 20s drinking too much wine and vomiting all over the place so it's pictures like girls like you know their friends are holding her up and or whatever acting great and i'm like that sucks yeah because it's all documented it's there forever yeah. you know what i mean so yeah. like our it's shit like wall was, of shame our shit was gone forever nobody yeah. knows yeah you know <laughs> I which know. I, thank god <laughs> <laughs> just made it through did you guys see uh i didn't even know this uh barstool sports posted this up uh just the other morning um the uh, the video of him in the legal battle with Michael Rappaport. I didn't even know, like, I guess I was out of so the So what's route. the whole deal going on there? So, first of all, and I guess I, I do recall Michael Rappaport doing things with Barstool before, which it, it didn't even dawn on me till like, I don't know, maybe a year ago. When he's I, such a whiny, uh, well, annoying. Yeah, when the whole election thing went on, like, I know he's like super anti-Trump. and uh, Yeah, he's just he's so whiny angry. so uh, it's like, yeah. Shh, come on, dude. He, he's, well, he's a, and he attacks a lot of people, right? And he's very, very vocal about yeah. it and a bit, a bit vicious and stuff like that. And some people find it very funny, right? Some people find that very funny. Uh, whatever. I don't really care. Uh, but I didn't know that they had a big falling out. And I guess uh, the CEO of Barstool at that time, which was Dave before uh, uh, Erica took over, uh, knew that when he let go of Michael Rappaport that he was going to do what he does, which is be outlandish and crazy. And I guess he he did he did some memes or stuff of him bending Dave over and, and whoa oh yeah and just talking shit and stuff like that yeah and Dave was ready for that you know reaction and so then he had shirts made right afterwards of like him as a clown with herpes or some shit oh wow <laughs> yeah and then I guess Michael comes back hey, that's and, a game they're going they're playing uh, yeah, that game back well yeah throw, you know, throwing mud at each other well I, I and the, the funny part though is that obviously you know you know Mike does it loves to play this game until it really hurts him or you know people. Or he's the so he's suing them. Yeah, he. But I, he, he, I mean, Dave blew it out of the water. He couldn't. He couldn't prove anything to him. And he, and 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 the way he was trying to set it up, the way the lawsuit was going, it was trying to prove that B Barstool Sports was already trying to uh, uh, is premeditated. Yes, yeah. premeditated, trying to destroy his name by doing and had the mm. shirts ready to go. Then fired him and then released it. Where Dave was like, nah, no, dude. It was like, a response. It was a response yeah. to his bullshit, knowing that he was going to act like that and say, okay, you want to play that game? I'll make a shirt. Oh, my God. Yeah, so. That's ridiculous. I know, right? Yeah. Crazy Spe drama. Speaking of controversy, uh, the Lil Nas uh, Satan shit. Oh, yeah. Uh, what's going on with that? Everybody talking about that. Yeah, right everybody and their mother's talking about this. So, I mean, okay, so the deal is the shoe's got like 666 on it, a pen, you know, pentagram. Only 666 uh, shoes. I heard, I heard yeah, there's some blood in, in there's it a or human, That's what he says, right? There's a drop oh, of okay. human blood in the in the little fucking whatever. <laughs> yeah, I can't. And, I don't even know what to believe. And uh, now, It's like now, the number one tra trending video right now, too, right? The music video? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's so terrible. Anyway, so so here's the thing. So Nike apparently is suing them now or not associated Well, yeah, a lot deal. of people thought it was a partnership. And so I think that's why they're suing because the initial – Everybody coming out was just like, I can't believe Nike. And, right. Well, you know. Okay. So let's let's put our tinfoil hats on then. Do you think they had <laughs> a part of constructing this? They've obviously seen how. Well, you know how I feel about how that stuff. went with you know with with uh, you know Colin Kaepernick and yeah. all these different things where they've been associated loosely, or then they they claim ownership when it works in their favor, but then when it doesn't, they sort of you know disassociate I mean, themselves. You know where I stand on this. I think these a lot of these big big yeah. companies like this either way they're making money they're are constructing br are, are brilliant at marketing and you know it was just like the shrimp thing like it doesn't make sense to me why the like we just talked about that the cinnamon yeah. toast thing right <laughs> yeah you're a, right that's, a guy makes a that's false the stupidest claim. article i've ever heard right of. a yeah, guy makes a false claim and then becomes famous it, for it's it. not shrimp it's just all the sugar yeah it's, it's just, all the <laughs> extra sugar we give you yeah. isn't that crazy yeah yeah, yeah. millions of people sugar. talking about cinnamon toast crunch now <laughs> yeah. so 
Yeah, you know, you saw Nike, you know, with the all the the controversy with Kaepernick and everything go back and forth, and and they made a ton of money off of that. That all that. Well, they're suing him though, so that makes me think that it, maybe they didn't. Yeah, because you know, he. So what did he do? He took the shoe and then. So what, he have somebody design that shoe. Yeah. So then, apparently Nike's saying we did not say you. Yeah, could we do didn't that. authorize it or whatever. Yeah. Is probably where that. Yeah, but did they have? Is. I mean, okay. So there's a there's a massive, uh, and I should know this right because I'm into sneakers. There's a massive resell market in in Nike's as it is, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I I don't understand like what's to stop him from buying? What's to stop anybody from buying a pair of Nikes? You know, coloring Painting them up. It. Yeah, yeah, there's a guy. Yeah, don't like, people do that anyway? Yeah, there's a guy called Kikasso who I've bought a couple pairs of shoes from him way back when. Kikasso, and he is yeah. uh, he's an artist, and he takes uh, he takes shoes, uh, all different brands, not just Nike, but all different brands, and he paints art on them and then sells them, and they look they look cool, right? And and a lot of people buy them, a lot of athletes have them, and he sells them for a premium rate. Mm. Like, so does that mean that he yeah. could be sued by Nike then? Like, I don't understand. I don't know what the whole deal so is. That, so this has to be either, you know, the the music industries, the, the the album that, you know, they're dropping associated with Lil Nas. Like, is this a new album? And, and his video obviously is brand new. Yeah, the video is but new. But to get attention now, it's like you got to create some kind of controversy. So is that coming from the music uh, side of it, or, or does it Nike. come from Nike, right? Uh, or a plot with between both? Yeah, you know what? Because yeah, a little handshake. How it, yeah, how it plays out will really matter, right? Because they could say I'm going to sue you, and then nothing comes, yeah. and then it gets dropped, and yeah. nothing happens, right? Right, and and, and, and yeah, so it, it's like they could be associated just as so long until they're ready, and then the like, yeah, now we're going to sue you. Yeah, yeah. So here's our plan: if it gets too you know bad pub, we'll just pretend like we're not with it, and we'll sue you. Yeah. Right. Meanwhile, we're going to get lots of public, and you are too. Yeah. We both are. Right. You know what this screams to me, which is this is just it's so exhausting. But, yeah, but here's the thing that's interesting to me is that is the outrage people have over some things mm -hmm. and not and and other things uh, are not so much. Like yeah. we just heard about Mr. Potato Head maybe changing his name to Potato Head because apparently it's gendered or whatever. Yeah, and then you have a shoe that is you know named after <laughs> the personification of pure right. disgusting evil yeah. Yeah. right yeah symbolically should be worse than hitler yeah it, right? Right, right which is everybody's go to it's right? very interesting i'll let, you know I'll, i will say this music has has you know they've used satan and i mean how, oh forever. i just think it's been this generation has been it's it's popular to be anti god mm -hmm. you know that's been going on for the last decade and a half maybe arguably two decades where mm -hmm. it's it's cool to be anti-god i mean the the uh, rise of that was an, an igen also of uh of atheism is like higher today mm -hmm. than it's ever been right yeah so i just i just think that it's become more popular to be that hmm. i mean also it's i mean i mean you're gonna get these shoes because you want people to react right oh, like, yeah. if, if you nobody want, gave a attention. shit yeah, yeah nobody gave a shit you're just putting on red black shoes nobody cares yeah. Yeah. You know well, there's I mean? not even that many pairs, and I would imagine most people will will would buy them to to resell them or hold on to yeah. them because of value increase. Because where do they get the blood? That's what I want. Yeah, to I don't. It, that's got to be. Fake. That's yeah. That's they they be just fake. say that like, oh, it's embedded in the shoe. Yeah. 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 You, can't, you can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I totally believe you. <laughs> then, right. It's Satan lying yeah. too, for sure. Yeah. Lying. Oh. Yeah. They got us yeah. again. Yeah. Then we have all these satanic priests, you know, praying over it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. In reality, it's another Nike sweatshop. Wow. Yeah. 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 Some the twelve-year-olds making just them like cut their, just, uh, cut their finger. Oh, you know what we'll say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dangerous uh, work conditions. No, 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 no. Uh, There's a drop of blood in every, uh, in every so, shoe. You know? Yeah, the, I've I've been trying to bring this up. I didn't know where to insert this ever, but like so as the, usual. Yeah, I, I I'm really into cults, as you guys know. <laughs> Whoa. Um, I just like to watch and see, you know, in history, like where they come from, who's buying into these things, uh, just to be better prepared for more of them coming up because they will. Uh, so there was this you one get caught off guard or something. <laughs> Damn it. The cold cut me again. Hey man, look what, I don't know. You could, you could classify a lot of movements out there as cults yeah, if you true. want. So, um, and I'll, you know, I'm happy to, to name them out right now, but, um, basically have you guys heard of like where the thug comes from the, the term thug? No. Yeah. Yeah, so Tupac didn't invent it. No, it wasn't no. Tupac. Yeah. I mm -hmm. thought that too. Uh, no, it was, uh, in India back in the day. Um, I guess the uh, the thuggies was this basically it was part of this cult that was notoriously <laughs> like they killed the most people out of anybody like almost like over history uh, over a couple million people like, really yes wow and we yeah. don't know who these I didn't no they were idea. called thuggies yeah and so this is in India and so what they they were like a band of um, 
basically they would they would um they would uh like attack people on the roads and like steal and, and they were thieves and they would steal their stuff and then they would uh I, I believe uh tell me if I'm wrong, Doug. Obviously you don't have your setup like normal right now, but um like they would have these uh ropes that they would tie around, they'd like strangle people to death uh with them, but it was all it was all part of uh, you know their god that they worshipped, uh, which was it like, is like a sacrifice. Yeah, to to their god wow. that they worshipped. Wow. Yeah, and they just killed people to sacrifice. And they just god. they just kept killing them, and then they would they would offer the, their bodies. Yeah. Now I'm not gonna lie. When you said thuggies, all I thought about was like because my son wears huggies. I thought about like they're like huggies, <laughs> but they sag. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Get your kid a pair of thuggies. Some thuggies. You know He's got some sunglasses. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. So that's what thug derived from that. Derived wow. from that. So oh, wow, yeah, I didn't know thugs that. Thugs on the road that would basically attack people, steal that, and then kill. And how them. old is that? How, how far back does that go? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think it's yeah hundreds of years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. What, there's like a fine line between like, you know, civilized and like we can be, do some really terrible shit as yeah. humans and justify it. And yeah, oftentimes the stuff justify, like especially if you think it's righteous, right? Yeah, you're, like you're doing this for something in the, that direction. The, for me, the craziest story is uh, how um, God, who is it that killed? Uh, it was Manson c- c- got together a bunch of upper middle class kids mm-hmm. and basically convinced them to murder other people, and they were they they were normally they were normal, well adjusted kids, you know, good families, mm-hmm. and he essentially convinced them to murder like a pregnant woman and you know the whole story yeah how do you get into someone's mind like that i don't know that is some serious he must have been like in well obviously he used a lot of drugs on yeah these people, well i mean but- you're, you're you're giving an example of the the crazy scary side but you see it on the religious side too you see very fanatical people in in good yeah. even good communities yeah you know that that like just worship the guy who's presenting this information oh, you can see that in almost any group yeah, yeah. when's the last time you argued I mean, with a, a uh, nutrition of well, the what was this what was, this what was the stat right. on like you know most people want to be led most people want to follow somebody and mm. when you find somebody who is just can speaks charismatic yeah and and the, everything they say is what you needed to hear yeah, it resonates with you yeah. so much mm-hmm. yeah it's, yeah, it's I mean, like almost it, undeniable and you're already that person that is looking to follow and I just, I also feel like, you know, it's a good movie that shows that very, very well. Fight Club. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. How he gets that whole, how he gets them all. The Tyler time. Durden. The, yes. the Waco doc- documentary does a good job. Oh, that's a real, Waco real deal. Great. Yeah. yeah, you got to watch that. Yeah, that actually one. happened. Yeah, 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 no, you, and, and when you, and they did a good job of like, you know, when you're an outsider looking in and we were watching the news and stuff like that, you're like, what the fuck? These crazies yeah. and he's mm-hmm. crazy. But when they when they build it from the beginning and they show you the relationships he built and like how he was, he's going, creating a family for a lot of people yeah, that just didn't have anything. That's you right. know, and so it's that it's so predatory that way. Oh, 100 yeah. percent. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, so I think you see it on both yeah, both yeah. sides. So I sure. learned something interesting uh, yesterday because so super left turn, but it's kind of cool. Did you know chicken nuggets come in four specific shapes? <laughs> What are, what are the, the dinosaurs? The, yeah, um, no, 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 no. no. Like, find the shape. Like, yeah. I'll show you right now. Like so McDonald's, cube. McDonald's literally has four shapes of of, of nuggets. Oh, Bell. they do different ones? I thought they are all the same. No, they're not. And they're not random. They're literally pressed four shapes. Really? There's the bell, the bone, the boot, and the ball. You can look it up. So anytime you get chicken nuggets, twenty piece, whatever, what? you look in there. It's one of those four. Now shapes. The, uh, the funny part about that is so it's it, not random. They do it. No, they make it yeah. with that to make it look like they're like random. They're random. You just right. don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I never eat chicken nuggets, but I thought that was very interesting. Of course, though, it's not. It's. Pro, I mean, it's meat. Did you ever see it's all rib it's like meat Pringles and chips, organ? You know did I mean? you ever see that that documentary? I think I want to say it, it was. This was years ago. Uh, Jamie something. Saves the world or something like that. Oh, I think I know. What you're and it about. goes around to all these, like some of the like the the, the fattest states or cities and states, mm-hmm. and he goes and talks to the kids and tries oh, to educate them yeah, on nutrition. Mm-hmm. And he did a demonstration with chicken nuggets, and he sh- to show these kids like how they're made. Like, he takes mm-hmm. all the cartilage and the bone in front of them, and like yeah. you know grinds it all up in a blender and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that. And then it's all soupy and pink, and then he pours yeah. it in the frying pan. You know pan. what? That would have never done worked on me though. Well, it didn't work on the kids. I was going to say, because they get the nuggets, like, whatever. Like, a couple kids were, like, grossed out, but then half of them were, like, as soon as it was fried and done, they're like, yeah! yeah. <laughs> now, who would still eat this? <laughs> it just I'm hungry. Sh- it just shows you how much better marketing McDonald's has done. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, yeah. that's, that's what I'm saying. Speaking of obesity, you, you, uh, some statistics came out. 
80% of the people in the hospital with COVID, so people who get COVID who have to be hospitalized, yeah. 80% of them are overweight or obese. Wow. So, so it's the, Why did it take so long for this information to come out? It's the number one uh, risk factor for severe I thought we already knew symptoms. that. Yeah, but like somewhere along the line- The data keeps confirming. Yeah, it, it got countered. Didn't it get countered for a while and say like, oh, it's not just because, you know, like it, that's not the highest factor. No, it's it. That's it right yeah. there is is being obese or overweight. Now, and now, of course, this flies in the face of the whole health at every size movement and, you know, whatever. But the reality is like if you're obese or overweight and it's not muscle or well, whatever- Well, and the reality is nobody wants to hear that. So it says that that's like, that's like one of those things that comes out and they just could get brushed right underneath the rug. Mm, and that's yeah. what you're seeing right now. No yeah. one's going to be talking about it. Yeah. Longer. Meanwhile, uh, uh, I think Americans have gained more weight this year than in many years uh, past mm -hmm. because sure. of the shutdowns. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Sure. A, lot, a lot of people it gained a lot of weight. Some people got in better shape, but most people gained weight. Stress, sedentary, you know, mm -hmm. poor diet, all the all the above. Yeah. What do you do when you're stressed out? Yeah. You want to eat? Yeah. yeah eat no. and drink. You want to eat? You know, four shaped chicken nuggets. But I, what an uphill yeah. battle though is releasing it for. And the, the level of self-awareness it takes for the masses to accept that information and take responsibility. Because when you look at what was a stat we did, 40-something percent is now clinically obese. Oh, and yeah. And 80 percent is overweight. 70 percent. Yeah. 70 percent is overweight. Yeah. So, you know, you, you hear that's every that's most everybody there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The other the, And the people that were in the minority, I already feel like knew this anyways, mm -hmm. right? Like if you're already somebody who was – actively uh, you know, pursuing a healthy lifestyle, eating well, good relationships, exercising in a gym, doing mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I feel like that that community already kind of figured this out. I, yeah. I, that's not news to me, mm -hmm. right? I, I, I don't, oh, yeah, we know fitness. Yeah, it's, yeah, but but this is news to a lot of people. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't not, know being overweight or obese. Well, you, we talked with from. Adam Sedlak recently, and he was discussing like the the statistics that they have too on uh, how much COVID is actually spread in the gym industry. Is it like ridiculously low? It's lower than the, the studies that they've done so far show that that they're not uh, vectors of transmission. They're yeah. just not. Well, speaking of that, uh, you see all the articles that are now coming out on the states that have loosened up all the regulation on on masks. Yeah, so far they're doing good. So far they're doing better. Actually, mm -hmm. not bad at all. You know, when you factor everything in, though, uh, unemployment, uh, deaths due to suicide, mental illness due to to excessive lockdowns. It it seems like it's getting very clear that the lockdowns, yeah. the the severe lockdowns, were caused more, harm. and that's really the weight of the argument for me. Yeah, it it, it is like and we had to weigh that out. We talked about in the very beginning of everything once it was starting to unfold was like, what are going to be the casualties of shutting down all these businesses, these schools, you know, p keeping people in their houses, making them wear masks, not not interacting. You know what the truth is? The truth is, had you not locked things down, people probably naturally would have been avoided right. lots of public places. They, they would have been a lot more cautious just on their own. But accord. here's the difference. You don't feel forced. That yeah. makes a big difference, It's, it's a dude. big difference. Makes a huge difference. You yeah. do that choice yourself versus feeling like you're being forced. Yeah. It's a very big difference in how you perceive it psychologically. Yeah. yeah. I got something really fascinating. So I saw this today. I thought this was both awesome and a little frightening. So a PhD student, Heather Dewey Hagboard, had 3D printed portraits from DNA found on cigarette butts and chewing gum on the streets of New York City. So what she did was what? So so people who throw their cigarettes, okay, right, I got that, or their gum, they spit on the floor. She yeah. used the DNA. She got the from DNA all. from them and constructed their faces, 3D printed their faces, no way, and did a, an exhibit, no way, right there. No and way. And didn't exhibit to show, like, these are the people that- These threw. are the people that would do something like Oh, my this. God, dude. <laughs> no way that's possible. That's what it says. Wow. So it says here, imagine dropping a cigarette butt, then see. a couple uh, days me, later walking to some let random art gallery. No way. Your let that. me see this. It's just a picture I just took. I know. It's, wow. That if that's accurate, that's fucking trippy. Dude, that's trippy. Yeah. You know what's trippy about- Now, that's cool. Also scary. Oh, it's scary. Yeah. Like, if you just, like, blow your nose, throw in the garbage, someone's like, oh, cool. Did she have pictures of, like, being able to find these people, too? Or was this just all, like, yeah, She kept them random, Well, I mean, obviously. that's the hardest part. Once you got to who they who they are, yeah. you yeah, know, look at, look at. tracking them down and finding them would be easy. Oh, 
dude. Whoa, that's <laughs> and she made an art gallery of it. Like, these are the people that were that are littering or whatever. The streets. That's wild. That is very wild, dude. I didn't even know that was possible. Dude, the future's gonna be weird when the technology gets super cheap. You know what I mean? Like you're hanging dude, out. Dude, and that's so creepy. You're hanging she's out with she's your got girl. a wall full of heads. Yeah, no, it's an art gallery. She's I know, doing, I get it, I but know. like just you know, from a visual perspective, like you see it's it's almost creepy, right? Where's it's it at? Like, I want to see it. It's actually kind of cool. Uh, I think it was New York. Oh, that's New yeah, York. but I mean, imagine you're like in the future because everything is going to be so you know technology be advanced, right? So you probably have an app where you could do this. Yeah, and you're like you're in the, you get, your girlfriend gets in the car or whatever, and she's like, "Wait a minute, that's not my hair." You're like, yeah, it is. <laughs> no, it's not. Hold on, let me put up my app. Uh, she shows a picture of the chick. What? <laughs> yeah, this bitch. Did you, ah! did you guys? <laughs> that's know? my best friend. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> Uh, you remember when, uh, obviously you guys have seen Elf, it, yeah, you know, it's yeah. a classic, like, classic. you know, when they're filming that they didn't like even shut down a lot of the streets and everything. So when he did, when he was like running around in his little costume and everything, they were like capturing a lot of these moments. And, uh, so him going over to where the pre-chewed gum was and everything was, was real. He ate that on real for real. It, apparently he Ooh. did that for real. Uh, uh, that is so disgusting. Anything for comedy? I no, guess. I had friends that did stuff like that. Remember, we were talking. We've shared what? on the podcast oh, stories. Oh, guys that want to just high get school. A, yeah, yeah. And horse manure inside a biscuit and eating. This ants is another and, dude thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah I used to. I watched just, them you gross off, each other off, out uh, underneath a desk and then chew it. Hey, like, you ever, you ever, you ever, you ever tra- uh, like have your girl like when you're dating, you know, and you're in, like junior high or high school, do that, split where the you, gum with her. Yeah, or you like make out and like the gum goes. <laughs> no, just because you want everybody to know, like she chewed my gum. Yeah, it's so gross. <laughs> the fuck were we thinking, dude? That's weird. <laughs> so disgusting. I let her wear my jacket. That's what uh, was cool. Uh, yeah. Hey, did you give hickeys, dude? Huh? Do you ever give hickeys? Uh, sure, sure. There was a. Fa- I, yeah, that's I such a dumb thing, dude. Yeah, it was. No, that's yeah, we, my girlfriend. <laughs> Yeah. Like you can oh, see yeah, it like once or twice. I was like, I don't like this. That was so. like a seventh grade thing or something around there. I'd say it around there. It it's, wasn't cool when you're in high school. It was yeah, cool. it, like I don't get it. It's just well, it was when because when you're in that when you're in that like people to know when you're yeah. fifth grade. You may, I made out fifth grade. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it, it's more face. of that when you're in fifth grade to eighth grade. Right, you just come out of sex ed and you want to be you want to be the person who's. You know, yeah. that I'm, I'm yeah. experimenting. Yeah. I'm trying right. all these things you guys learned. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm already giving hickeys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in the lab right now. Yeah. Dude, I totally made out. Yeah. No, you did it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at this. Oh, yeah. How do you think I got that? Oh, touching a boob. I that had to tell like everybody, a, yeah, dude. That's like the yeah. shape of a vacuum, though. I don't know. That, yeah. that's, isn't that what made probably turtlenecks so popular for us in that, that era? I mean, that was- hickeys? the t- Yeah, that was, the time to, that was the time to rock turtlenecks. I think you're right. Yeah, it was that around that- That sense. That was right around that same time. Yeah. And that's what it was. You'd have it. You'd hide it up show your friends. Yeah. My, my sister came home. <laughs> this is a true story, dude. And she was, uh, I want to say she was a junior in high school. And I was a very overprotective brother. You guys know my personality. So I was really, she comes home and she's got hickeys on her neck up oh and down, right? God. And my mom saw it. And of course she's like, please God, do not let your dad see what's going on. <laughs> so I'm walking into the kitchen and I hear this conversation. My mom telling my sister, don't show your dad. Yeah. Then I walk in. They both see me, and and they're both like, "Oh fuck!" So I could tell something's going on. Like, don't tell him what. Don't tell him what. What's going on? And I see the hickeys. I'm like, "Oh shit!" So this fucking kid shows up at the house to come hang out or whatever. Poor kid, shit his pants. Oh god. Oh yeah. Never came back. <laughs> never came what back. Is, what's the I'm like, you marked up my sister. I'll mark you. <laughs> oh no. <it> was a- <laughs> Oh, I'm gonna make some marks on you myself. <laughs> he was just a horny teenager. Right? Never came what back. Is, what is this? What's the science behind what happens there? Is it like you're, you're breaking caliper? Is cali- that caliper? Calip- calipers? Calipers? Capillaries? Yeah. What the hell? Yeah. What's Hanging out with me a lot. So uh, you, that's what. <laughs> that's what it is. It, it, yeah. You're sucking so hard that they burst. Yeah. It's, uh-huh. like, it's like when you throw up and I get them like you know around my eyes. And then what? It, what is it that makes that? <laughs> re- Doesn't happen to you guys. You what, what makes it <gasps> regenerate and turn over and then go away? Right. It's like a. It's a bruise. You just mm. basically created a surface bruise. I wonder if the juve light would like speed that process up. Yes, right? it would. Yes, it would. See, I bet it would. The, uh, no, it actually absolutely. That's why I was asking you. So was, it heals. We had a commercial for juve. Even I bruises. Like, I, like a fucking underhand yeah. pitch. Oh wow. Sometimes, sometimes uh, you're just sometimes, I, sometimes you're just brilliant. Sometimes yeah. I'm too good. I'm I not think. gonna lie. Sometimes I'm too good. Well, I can't make it obvious. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it actually will. It will. It will speed up. It speeds up the healing. A lot healing of stroking going on over here. Of any. <laughs> <laughs> just want to point you're that so out. You're so good. No, you're just so want to point you're that so out. Yeah. Oh no, you stop. <laughs> yeah. no, you're good. You're the best. Go ahead. Ah, I am the best. Yeah. Yeah. You're. You're. I'll just sit this out. You're all right. No problem. No. No, it'll work. You know what's funny? So uh, Juve gave me the you know the the new small unit that they have, yeah, like this big, the portal. Yeah, yeah. So Jessica's been using it every day, just on her face, uh, ten minutes a day, uh, five days a week or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know she was using. it. I brought it home. I did the live with the you know the live Juve or whatever. Yeah. So they, I had it. And I, I took it home. 
anyway, uh, I've been noticing she's looking really, I told him like, man, you look really good. Your skin looks really good. She's like, I'm not wearing any foundation or anything. It's from the juve two weeks. Two weeks of using it, I could tell. Just I feel like we're coming yeah. up with better marketing material for these companies now, dude. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, you know, no surf, no suck face, juve, yeah, red yeah, yeah. light, something like that. Yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah the make them go away. Yeah, like the Caldera <laughs> one we came up with <laughs> the other right. day. I think these Doesn't are money. Doesn't make your dick small. Yeah. Okay, so. yeah. It won't shrink your dick. Yeah, no. These are money. No, it, no, it works, dude. And if you shine it on your balls, your testosterone goes up. Yeah, no. I know and it's it. just the right shape. Yeah, we, we saw uh, uh, Ben Grief will do that, Yeah, he unfortunately. Mm. Hey, look, I know you're enjoying this podcast. Real quick, before we get to the questions, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our free guides and content. Go check them out. They're free and they're awesome. All right, enjoy the rest of the podcast. First question is from Jenny Jane 36 What is the difference between strength gains and muscle gains? Ah, uh, strength versus muscle. All right, so strength is obviously a function of performance, Muscle contributes heavily to that, but so does technique, uh, so does your skill, and your ability of your muscles to communicate with each other. This is why a much bigger bodybuilder might not be as strong as someone much smaller. So can you develop more strength without building more muscle? Mm. Yes, you can. Can you build muscle without necessarily gaining more strength? Yes, also. Mm -hmm. Now, bigger muscles always contract harder. So a bigger muscle is stronger in its contraction, but if you can't translate it to skill and technique, then you'll have bigger muscles that just aren't moving as effectively, and so you're not going to be as strong. Now, the beauty of it is this. They're so closely connected that training for one or the other will probably give you both. It's it's an interesting question uh, that, you know, I've gotten quite a few times and it, I remember geeking out on this a lot as a kid because I would see guys that weren't that huge, but were insanely strong. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, where, where are they getting this from? Because uh, all the guys I used to idolize were just huge Arnold type, you know, bodybuilder guys that were on uh, action movies. And, Mm -hmm. and, and, and meanwhile you see, you know, a kind of a, a scrawny, looking dude like being able to pull off these amazing feats of strength but uh, then I started learning more about the central nervous system I started learning more about force output I started learning you know about technique and mastery of technique and things like that and then you, you really see like there's there's a different way to train to manipulate both of those and sometimes they both uh, you know bode well for each other as well well there's definitely carryover in both but yeah. I, I mean like Olympic athletes are such a great example of this conversation yeah right? like they don't just keep getting bigger and bigger I mean you look like our, no, they our compete in weight classes yeah like our, our buddy Sonny Webster you look at like his his body you know shape size yeah. is I mean he's built yeah. but he's not a bodybuilder yeah he's right? not. but he can crush a bodybuilder oh, bro, and yeah him. he's incredibly strong so it just it really highlights how much uh room there is to improve CNS and and technique mastery like yes, really yeah. getting good at that that there's you can you could scale strength quite a bit without getting massive or building a ton of extra muscle just by getting better at the movement itself. Yeah, Yeah, and a lot of those movements don't, like big bulky muscles would get in the way of of you know the fluidity of it of of you know really you know it, like being able to being able to move with, with ferocity and, and more force and uh, power and so you know like we we literally build our bodies and we 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 determine what what the outcome is based on the way that we're moving and we're stimulating it. Yeah. I think this also highlights so the other side of that, which is that you don't necessarily always have to move a ton of weight to build a very aesthetic physique. Correct. Too. Totally. Correct. I mean, I, I actually was I fell in that camp for most of my training career i actually i mean i have i have chased prs and and singles and heavy lifts more in the last six years with you guys than i did my previous 15 years Mm -hmm. of lifting i never cared about that it was like it was always about how i looked and so i was all technique guy all about diet and building muscle and constantly phasing my workouts and really like trying to maximize that i and i rarely ever would lift to it because i was too much risk for me Mm -hmm. it's like yeah i know if i if i train the skill of this and i focus more on my output I could get better possibly and, and the gains could carry over into my physique, but I was so focused on my physique that I was like, I don't really care about that. The risk wasn't, I it was too high for me at that point. Now, what I have learned with my experience today, I think there's a nice balance. There. Totally. Like I do think that I got, I got tremendous value as a pro starting to strength train and, and working in the more performance aspect of training. Uh, that carried over into building a better physique. So yeah. Now that I, that being said, I would say to the average person, just focus on getting stronger. Now you don't need to be a competitive lifter. You don't even need to just focus on the big three lifts. Mm-hmm. 
But just getting stronger, you're going to get a great deal of, of both. I think when it starts to become more important to focus where you're going to go, whatever, is once you start to get advanced, once the weight really yeah. starts to get heavy, you know, okay, now I'm squatting 300 pounds. Should I push to get to 400 or should I slow my reps down and contract and squeeze and just focus on developing a better body? That becomes more of a, a you know, more of an important debate. But if you're new yeah. uh, or intermediate, uh, just get stronger. That's yeah. the most, you're going to get more out of that than almost anything yeah, else. Building a strong foundational base will give you so many more options to build off of from there. Totally. Right. Next question is from Nom Nom Pastrami. For people with a lot of muscle already, how can they lose body fat without tracking calories? Without tracking calories. All right, here's a deal. Um, and I've worked with, I'd say many of the clients, if not most of them, I would work with, we would not uh, count calories uh, f for the most part. Did he, did he say a lot of body fat or a lot of muscle? muscle. A lot of muscle. They're, in other words, they're trying to say, I already have a lot of muscle, so my metabolism's fast. I think they're probably alluding to what we always talk about, which is build your metabolism type of deal. Which that's always part of the strategy, but what I was where I was going is look for things that uh, encourage behaviors that lead to a leaner body or physique. So here's the easiest one. This one's super easy. If your diet includes processed foods, like most people, I mean, if you're the average American, 70, 80 percent of your diet is processed foods. But even if your diet is 30 percent processed foods, if you just cut out the processed food without counting calories, you're probably going to eat less. And get leaner. It requires you to count nothing except for I'm not eating things that come in boxes or wrappers or whatever. It just leads to a behavior where you eat more appropriately. That single thing right there is the most effective single step I've ever done with any client uh, for weight loss. That doesn't include any anything. Oh, well, there's I don't know. There's there's a lot of things that you can do to start to lose body fat without tracking calories. I think. Uh, Becoming more present when you're eating. I've talked about that before, yeah. where mm -hmm. you just don't eat in front of the TV or the phone. You'd be amazed by you actually uh, chew all your food. Yeah, yeah, or chewing more. Right, focus actually on the chewing process. Like a lot of people, like throw something in their mouth, bite it a couple times, and swallow it. Like there, mm -hmm. there was a book that came out one time. It was a fat loss book, and it was like something around like chewing your food 50 times or something. Like yeah. it would result in all these people losing weight. So there's lots of strategy. There, just getting smaller portion sizes, skipping one meal in the day. Uh, there's a lot. Lot of things that you can do that doesn't require tracking calories by but, but changing your behaviors that will result in fat loss and you know or avoiding a lot of empty calories candy uh alcohol uh you can get rid of a lot of that stuff yeah. and, and get that same yeah. result to that point i mean i, I just read a study it was just uh over like the diners in, in america where they, they did some study where basically they switched out the the size of their fork to a smaller fork and people ate way smaller portions yep. as a result of that it's yep. the, the the most simple thing you could do but you, you felt like you know you, you you gained more uh from the smaller fork and so it would just naturally you thought you were satisfied well and honestly somebody who uh, like that's how i was questioning what they were asking in this because if you got a lot of muscle mass i'm assuming that you're you're alluding to you have a pretty fast metabolism then too so it's pretty easy for this person mm -hmm. you know if they get a, a, a roaring metabolism they want to lose body fat and they don't feel like tracking calories make a few good decisions yeah, in, in <laughs> my opinion behavior modification through the stuff that we're talking about will lead to a pretty good healthy lean physique mm -hmm. it will not lead to a shredded physique yeah not okay. competitive now if you're trying to get shredded you're gonna have to count and, and, and measure yeah. things. And, and if but you, if you want to get lean and healthy, uh, and, and you know, where, whereas where most people will look at you and say, "Wow, that person looks pretty good," you, you, for the most part, you don't need to count calories. Now, I don't, I'm not saying there's no value in understanding how many calories are in foods and what macros. I think there's value in that, and people should learn that. But you can, you most people can get very fit and, and relatively lean without ever really having to count calories. The all problem the time. with that is that just most people are so unaware. That's the problem. I mean, the, the, there's plenty of studies that support that too, that show that, uh, like I think it's 90 something percent of people uh, underestimate their calorie intake. Mm -hmm. And, and the ones that think they know, I mean, and I, and I, I find this all the time with myself, like, oh, I'm probably around 2,800, you know, and I guesstimate I'm never on, yeah. you know, and I'm pretty damn good at that. I've been doing that for a really long time. So well, especially with health foods too, like people eat salads and, you know, and they don't even realize it's like 1300 calories that they just consume. Well, I mean, I brought that up a long time ago. I'll never forget the first time that I actually weighed out and measured a sweet potato. Uh, cause sweet potatoes aren't really high in calories. And when you look at all the, the, you know, the apps or the books that, that break down the, the nutrients in it, it's 
um, you know, a relatively very healthy, low calorie mm-hmm. type of food, mm-hmm. but they grow in very different sizes. Yeah. And when they say like a small, medium or regular or large in the book, it's very different than a lot of times what you get at a grocery store. Yeah. Let's try and average it out. Yeah. And you, what you can find is it could be, uh, I mean, Bro, they're found, gigantic. Yeah. I found I was like <laughs> yeah. 300 calories off on one. Wow. You know, so that's a. I remember I did that with chicken breast, uh, and it said, you know, six ounces. And I'm like, oh, medium or small chicken breast. And I put, and I'm like, this is like, where'd they get this from? A dinosaur? <laughs> yeah. it's, bananas? Yeah. You ever, it's um, one medium chicken. banana. A medium banana is like that big. Like, where do you find that size yeah, of banana? Yeah, they don't make it. And you would think that's a small banana. Yeah, right? I would think that's a tiny banana. Yeah, so that, that's the thing. And, and here's the thing, too. Like, when people ask questions like this, if if you're trying to get to that destination, like, so you have a goal in mind, right? nothing will be faster than tracking too because you'll be more precise. The way we're talking about is more long-term. Yes. And what's healthier long-term as far as your relationship with exercise and food by doing that. By yep. doing what you're saying, by addressing all the behavior things, this is a, a great way for a long, healthy lifestyle and good relationship. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all, you also have to look at it like it is work. Like, so if you are disciplined with your exercise, why wouldn't you apply that same discipline towards learning, you know, specifically uh, about tracking calories? And, and so, you know, like that way you have something that you can yeah. then go off course with. And, and, and a lot of people have no idea. Like they know from what they hear in media. So for example, you know, I'll have a family member that's like, oh yeah, oh. Beans are really high in protein. So is peanuts. Like, uh, not really. I mean, they're high for a, a, a plant source, but do you know how many peanuts you'd have to eat to equal the same amount of protein you'll find in six ounces of chicken or how many yeah. beans? Like, oh, but it says high protein. You know, when I look at it, you know, it's, well, it's six grams. You know, six grams. Yeah, it's high protein for a plant, but in comparison to other sources, it's not high protein. Yeah. Well, and to back to a Justin point, because I think it's a very good, valid point. I mean, I feel the same way about exercise. You could, I mean, the the ultimate goal of both exercise or training, right, and nutrition is to get intuitive training and intuitive eating. I mean, that's... Yeah, we all want to get there. That, that's the pinnacle, in my opinion, is to get to a place where you know your body well enough, you know uh, exercise well enough or programming well enough that you can always maintain a very fit, healthy physique forever. Off a of feel. Yeah, off a of feel, right? And knowing, right? And even if you're outside those boundaries, you know you're outside yeah. those boundaries. And the same thing goes for nutrition, like that you have the ability to feel, oh, I- I'm eating where I- about where I should be. Even if you are sometimes outside mm-hmm. the boundaries, mm-hmm. I'm aware, right. mm-hmm. you know, I'm aware I'm eating this ice cream and I'm going beyond or outside of what I probably should be doing, but you're aware of that. And personally, I just think that most people need to track both those things to figure that out or learn both. They need a guideline first before they go off. Yeah, Yeah, learn how to, what is it, crawl before you walk? Yeah, crawl before you walk. Next question is from Ander Schimmel. What is all this hype around SARMs? SARMs keeps coming up. Dude, can I tell you guys something right now? So I did a little, I was doing a little research because there's a lot more SARMs that are out than when I first read about them. And so I went on Google, did a little bit of research, go back to Facebook and I'm getting ads like crazy from companies on Facebook. There's so many of these companies selling. Do you and just buy them online pretty easily? Very easily. Hmm. Um, it, it, now, here's the funny thing. Back when I really started reading them and SARMs started becoming, and out, by the way, uh, appreciate your patience. I'll get into what you know SARMs are and what I think about them. What's crazy, when I first started researching them, so SARMs exist in this gray market. They're not legal for human consumption or for sale for human consumption. They're currently called, considered research chemicals, which means you can buy them for research. Anybody can buy them for research. <laughs> yeah. So it's like this gray market area. Yeah. Now, in the past, when you bought a SARM, it would come in a, in a li- in liquid form. It would have a dropper, a measurement, so it looked like a research chemical. They're selling it as capsules and bottles that look like bodybuilding <laughs> stuff. They don't even fucking They're anymore. not even trying to They're not even cover trying. it. Yeah. No, it's crazy. Okay, so what are SARMs? All right, so- SARMs, uh, SARM stands for Selective Androgen Receptor Modulator. Okay, so what are androgen receptors? These are the receptors that testosterone attaches to. Um, testosterone is an androgen and anabolic uh, hormone. Now, why they developed SARMs was they, they were trying to develop a drug that would be able to target specific tissues of the body, but not affect others. So if you take testosterone, your muscles will get affected, your bones will get affected, you'll build more muscle, you'll build more bone, but your whole body uh, has, there's androgen receptors all over. So you might get oilier skin. If you're a woman, you'll get masculinization. You might grow facial hair. You might grow a small penis, no joke, the clitoris grows. Yeah, all we've, these, we've seen those. Yeah, all these, and I have seen yeah, them, by the yeah. way, it's weird. 
uh, all these symptoms that you'll get all over. So it's like, how, okay, we want to get the benefits of the anabolic benefits of testosterone, but we don't want any of these other potential side effects or whatever. So what they did is they created chemicals that are pretty selective with how they attach to these androgen receptors. And the promise is that you take them and you build muscle. So if you've got like muscle wasting disease or cancer, AIDS, you know, osteoporosis, but you're not getting effects like testosterone. Um, the other effects like testosterone. So that's the promise. Now, of course, athletes get their hand on it, hands on it like, oh, cool, I can take this and get effects like steroids, and it's not illegal, but it's not legal, but it's okay, I can buy it online. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem uh, with SARMs. They are new, they're experimental. Most of them aren't even in animal tri uh, human trials. Some of them are just in animal trials, and the ones that are in human trials are not it's still anywhere close to getting approved. So you are literally experimenting on yourself with drugs that you're buying from people who I don't you you don't know yeah. if they're putting it in there or they're not putting it in there what the deal is. Now I've heard a lot of athletes and um you know because it was it was attractive because it wasn't necessarily steroids but they they thought there might be a, a way around that maybe in through testing I don't know what they're oh, thinking. Oh they you can test for SARMs easily. Okay so now they can test for them. But I didn't hear about it being that big in the bodybuilding community, or is that not no, true? Hell no. no. Bodybuilders using right. Yeah, they're right. already using like all the real stuff. If you talk to a bodybuilder about this, they think it's stupid. Yeah, because you know, they think, or and I agree with this statement is that we have more research. Oh my god, we know what t testosterone yeah. and steroids. The, the, the are. truth, yeah, the only reason why this is even a, a popular conversation, and I, and I, I totally remember being this boy. You know, this is it's hitting the seventeen to twenty five year old market. Like, oh, crazy. I would I would fall for this. Yeah, one hundred percent, I would totally. too, because they've done such a good job uh, stigmatizing uh, steroids, mm -hmm. and it's got such a, a bad name for itself, and it's mm -hmm. like needle, and it's yeah, well, like, no, I'm natural, right? I'm taking SARMs, right? Yeah. So you know, and this so is you, over the counter. You get to somewhat. claim you're natural. This this you don't this, have to go to the black market. You don't got to inject a needle into yourself. Right. There's, you it's know, oral, right? And so you, as a teenage boy who was curious about these things. Uh, I would probably feel like this is me dipping my toe in the yeah. water without mm -hmm. going now, full steroid. Now, now, SARMs work. They build muscle. They definitely have anabolic effects in the body. Mm. Um, so they do work. I wouldn't fuck with We them. just don't know yeah. uh, a lot about them because they're new chemicals. Um, so it's like you're, you're playing a game. You don't know what the deal is. They're, they're, in fact, they're, they're recently, I just talked to Ben Greenfield actually the other day about them. He was all pro-SARM for a while. He goes, you know what? To be honest with you now- we're noticing that there may be some cancer pathways that could be activated from wow. this. I mean, we don't we don't know a lot yeah. because they're new. You know, chemical, you know, CrossFit athletes were getting busted with yeah, SARMs all the time, and right, yeah. left and right, because they were getting tested for steroids. But they're like, oh, we could do this SARM. Wasn't it that girl that got busted? And she said it's because she's making out with a boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was like his lotion that got on her or something. Yeah, so, and, and there's female athletes are using SARMs because they're being told it's not going to have any masculinizing effects yeah. uh, on the body. But there's so many of them that are out there now. Uh, it's wild. Like some build more mass and some are better for bone, whatever. And I'm doing all this reading. I'm like, and here's a, here's a shitty part, right? Here's, this is crazy. And I'm just going to warn everybody. If you try to do research on SARMs, here's how these internet marketers are. And they're smart. It's sleazy, but it's smart. They'll write blogs and articles pretending to be scientific reviews of the SARMs, but in reality, what they're doing is they're trying to populate the front page, the first page of Google. Yeah, when you so when you go it. first page of Google, SARM reviews, it's all written by these SARM, you yeah. know, guys who are, who are selling it. Right, right. And they're pretending to be so like, oh well, you know, it says here there's no risks at all. Yeah. And they're very safe. And the, the studies say that they're really good. And wow, look, this company's got like certification showing that it's pure or whatever. No man, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mess with that. I mean, if you want to experiment with your body, it's fine. It's your body. Yeah, but I just. But, I mean, in that case, if you're going to go that far, I just feel like you may as well dip into the testosterone world. I just, if you're going to, it's definitely we know what it does. I mean, I, I and I want to make this clear. I'm not promoting that to anybody, right? I'm not definitely, especially no. 17 to 25 year old boys that you should go out and try any of stuff. But if if I was to go be, if I was talking to 17 year old me, who easily would have been, uh, you know, persuaded by this uh, SARMs, mm -hmm. right? 
if I could go back and talk to him, I would just say, "Yo, bro, if you're gonna if you're gonna dabble in this world, you may as well." If it's either that or steroids, yeah, just take steroids. you take steroids and do them right, you mm-hmm. know, because there is a lot of research around that, and we know so much more uh, of the effects. And a lot of things that you talk about, like masculinizing and some of the, the potential side effects of that, that, that those all those increase with the higher and higher doses of that. They know? do, and it's usually for women that have an issue with that. The guys who take anabolics, if they take testosterone, they probably like the masculinizing aggression, the confidence that, you know, that, that kind of feeling that you get from it. Here's the truth. Testosterone is an, ex- for men, it's an extremely safe hormone. It's one of the safest hormones. You can give a man, you know, thousands of times because more testosterone. Recognize it right he away. might get some symptoms and stuff, but it's not going to kill him like insulin would do. You know, mm-hmm. insulin would kill you right away or, or, you know, other hormones. Uh, but SARMs, yeah, it's, it's crazy though. I'm looking at these ads and I really dug deep. I'm reading and I'm like, man, if I was a kid, and I'm the research. Even as a kid, I was a researcher. Right? I love to research things. I would have got sold. I would have yeah. read five articles. Oh, all of them say that there's no harmful, you know, issues, and, and and the rat studies show that there's no toxicity, and it doesn't suppress your testosterone. It does. You take SARMs, you will also affect your natural testosterone levels. So some people are like, well, I don't want to take steroids because it'll lower my testosterone. But same thing with SARMs. That'll, that'll still happen. Um, but yeah, I would have fallen for it. I totally would have fallen yeah, for it. Me too. User beware. Next question is from Nurse Buckmaster. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> what yeah. are good guidelines like for someone who wants to c- compete in a fitness show? Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, this, is your, this is your wheelhouse. Well, I think yeah. uh, this is a hard one, too, because to be honest with you, I think that a lot of people that get into competing get into it for the wrong reasons. Yeah, I remember you. You would always talk, you would often talk people out of it. I, yeah, mm-hmm. but many a lot of times uh, because I would get these people. It's becomes it's become very popular since Instagram. Yeah, I mean it's become the new uh, marathon. Like, How are they doing kind of, yeah. without uh, you know? Uh, are they still doing shows and everything? Um, I, I believe there. I believe competitions are going on. Still going yeah, on. I don't know how they're doing it. I, but I believe they're they're still happening. Um, I'm not. I, you know me. I don't really follow that I world don't know. very you're, much. You're as close as I am. To I it, know. So. You know. I, I know people look to me to ask, and then I get questions around like people that are. I'm like, I don't follow anybody who's competing mm-hmm. right now. Um, you know, it'd be a good question for you, Adam. Is because I want to get into what to do, but I think this would be a good question. What was your criteria? Yeah. For someone that you th- would then say, okay, you you can compete. Like, what would you at? What would you look for? Well, I, I think you have to have one a, a really good base uh, knowledge of exercise, right? So training, like mm-hmm. you should have like an idea of like the importance of programming and how you would phase it and, and mm-hmm. things like that. Like basic. You don't need to be like a you know, a PhD or have a lot of experience there, but you should have some understanding of, of exercise and form and technique too, right? Because you're going to go into this pushing the body to its limits in a lot of areas and training being one of those areas. And you shouldn't be pushing and stretching it if you're still really learning the mechanics of a lot of fundamental movements. Mm-hmm. So I think you should have a really good base, solid base of training. Uh, and then you, you, I think you have to have a really good knowledge and understanding of both nutrition and your metabolism. And that's what I saw, it's, and I'm speaking more, it's both sexes, but I'm speaking more to, uh, I, I told more women's bikini girls no than I did men's physique men. And that's because in the, in the, in the women's competing community, a lot of these girls were very low calorie going into this idea in the first place. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I've talked about a good girlfriend of mine who, I, I wouldn't let her compete for over a year of getting coaching from me before I would let her compete. And then she went in and did it uh, without without me. And then she got she was she was fatter on stage than what she was before. Body fat percentage. Because she lost me. muscle. And it just it boggled her mind. Even though she looked better to her, right? Because she sl- she got smaller and her weight came down. But it was exactly what I was trying to explain to her. I said, This the reason why you did this is because you didn't you weren't in a healthy place metabolism wise going into this. Yeah, you need room to go down. Yeah, you and and most most especially girls that are interested. And by the way, I'm there there, there are guys in this category too, but I did speak to way more girls to the, have this conversation than guys. If you're in a place already uh, and you exercise and train and and try and lose body fat and, or build muscle and you're only eating 1300 to 1800 calories, that's a pretty low place to be uh, already. And then, and knowing that you're nowhere ready for stage, you know, mm. your stage body fat percentage, 
uh, you're just not. And what? Uh, and unfortunately, we're we're in this time where these coaches that are hustling online are trying to make money, and they'll take everybody and anybody. Now, I wasn't in that place. We had Mind Pump. I was doing other things. I didn't need the money. And so when I saw somebody like this, I said, would say no. Like I I won't coach you for a show. Uh, at, at you know 1500 calories right now and you're telling me you want to do a show in 12 weeks and you want me to get you ready like I'm telling you right now I'm going to destroy your metabolism trying to get you there mm. uh, and I would be a dude now what about like their, their body image and their relationship with food and themselves well, like, I can imagine it, the pressure of mm. getting judged by your body and how you look and constantly focusing on how you look yeah if you don't have a, if you're not secure with yourself, woo, that could do a number on you. Well, the the truth is though, that's also, I mean, most of the ones that are the best, of the best in the in that space are extremely insecure mm. about their bodies, and that insecurity is what drove them to be uh, competitive and to be consistent. Mm. It's because they are, they have deep insecurities of being teased by, for looking a certain way or being fat or whatever it might have been that drove them into fitness and uh, they just happen to be have another level of dis discipline than the average person and mm -hmm. that's what's led them into competing uh, i mean i would like to talk all those people out of it uh, but the reality is most of us uh have some sort of insecurities that we're still battling when it comes to that and i guess uh before you get in you need to be very aware of your own insecurities so i i, I think that i've tackled most of my own um but I'm, i still am aware of that right like yeah, you I'm, competed as like a good as an adult like you were yeah, you've been doing it for a while i was already 30 something years old i've been a, i've been already a trainer for over 10 years like so i had a lot of experience already with body image issues and relationship with food and exercise my own issues that i had that drove me to taking anabolic steroids and trying to be a bigger guy and all that stuff so i'd already worked through all of that and when i got into competing i i'd never even had a desire to really do it it was really just to build a business it was really to gain authority because and unfortunately we live in a very superficial world and we're in, a, in the probably one of the most superficial businesses that people want to see that you can do that yourself and show I, I so i wanted to do it with no coach and no team and prove that i could do this and i also wanted to show that i could do it as healthy as i could until i had to cross that line so yeah, it was like what two i remember you, the the show you did when we were all working together at first i think it was like a few weeks out and you said okay now i'm going to get into the state the unhealthy part yeah the this. sport of it that's why yeah. I, I would tell the audience because like, i would document and talk to the you know my my instagram and youtube as i was going through it and i would let the audience know that okay everything i've done up to this point has been pretty health healthy relatively healthy the way i have slowly reduced body fat and slowly reduced calories i was still in a very i mean i got ready for every show and never dropped calories lower than 2500 calories it was a pretty decent place to be, especially for somebody who's trying. And that's to get, at the very end. Yeah, it's the very end. Right? The peak goes in the four thousand. Yeah, it's right? pretty so, manageable. Right. So I, I would tell them that. So from a and I wasn't doing excessive cardio. I was just stepping to get more movement and changing my programming to see the consistent results. But then there would get to a point when you get to that final two weeks, and I'm trying to shred every last ounce. That's when you pull all those crazy things out. That's where I would do two hours of cardio. Mm -hmm. That's where I would count calories in a, in a you know dangerously low place to be and manipulating water and sodium and i'm playing with all these things to achieve this look that's not health it's not a representation of health it's what looks great on stage and tanned up mm -hmm. and on the lights and on covers of magazines and i would be very transparent with my audience and say hey i'm i'm now entering i'm now crossed this this line of this is no longer healthy i'm going to push my body to the extreme limits to try and present my physique the craziest i could present so would you say the first step then is for somebody who wants to compete is are you is your metabolism in a in a good place are you eating a good amount of calories and you're and you're already relatively lean i would imagine that right I, yeah I, 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 I know this and the reason why i said earlier that they're treating it like marathons when i back in the day as a trainer a lot of times people would sign up for marathons as a way to get in shape they didn't work out. They didn't do anything. They're like, I want to get in shape. You know what'll help me motivate me if I sign up for a marathon? That, that's People are doing that with shows. Yeah, now. that's what I would get yeah. that a lot. I would get, uh, you know, a girlfriend that would say, "Hey, me and my girlfriend want to, you know, we have a competition to see who can get in the best shape, and we are going to do this show that's coming up in three or four months. Uh, would you help us, uh, you know, get ready for it, die for it?" And then I'd like start asking their experience and what they've been currently doing and how many calories, and they're like, no clue. No clue of like how many calories. get on stage. Yeah, they have no clue. But they, like you said, it, it's become so trendy and popular to do these 
that everyone's like, oh, this is a, a what a great way to get myself in the best shape of my life. Worst way ever. I know. And, yeah. and, and the truth is, you made do exactly what my friend did, where she went out on her own, and, and, and she thought she got in the best shape of her life because she was the smallest she'd ever been. She knew she dieted harder than she ever had in her life, and she got up on stage, she did it, was proud of herself, and I had her dunk, but I wouldn't let her see it till after the show. Because I knew it would have just fucking discouraged her completely. It would have ruined the way she presented herself up on stage. And afterwards, showed her. And showed her that her body fat percentage, although she was down, I think she was almost 30 pounds, or down 28, 30 pounds, her body fat percentage went up. And even psychologically, she thought she was in, in better shape. I was like, no, you're in way worse shape. Your metabolism is now slower than it's ever been, and your higher body fat percentage. Even though yeah. you have 30 pounds of weight off the scale off you that is really muscle. hard for people to to make that right yes. it was hard for her and she's looking at it yeah like she's looking at me i don't understand now, all the coaching and talking leading up to that yeah. from you know from me still didn't totally click. i for me personally i you know I, I never competed and i worked a little bit with some competitors i didn't do pre-contests you know co competition nutrition and training i just i always stayed out of that mm -hmm. but i did know a lot of people that competed and i don't know a single person that made it out of that space without some issues that they developed. Really. I don't know a single person because you're so focused on how you focusing on just your appearance anyway can cause issues. But when you have a competition and you know, you're going to display yourself and not only that, but you get critiqued mm -hmm. on how you look. Oh, you're, you're, yeah. you're a little a soft here. Handle that. Yeah. Oh, your muscles not big enough here. Oh, your yeah. glutes don't look, it's not good for you. To focus on that so much, it really can develop a very bad relationship with exercise. Now, that being said, okay, I also think it was one of the, the greatest times in my life. I also think that it, it um, has attributed to some of the, the, the greatest knowledge gains as being a coach, mm. the, per, the perspective it gave me to, to take it to that level. Um, I had a blast doing it. It was very, very cool to see what my body was capable to push those limits and those boundaries. Um, so I see there is a lot of positive, but I also think that, and I love this question because I do think there's a lot of prerequisites. I do think that you should be in that place. I, I, I know I'm not alone. I'm not the only person that was self-aware by 30 and had trained for a while and had a good diet. I mean, if you got a, if you have a healthy metabolism and you know you do, you know you're eating an, a good amount of calories, right? So you know you have a, a healthy metabolism. You've been training long enough to understand programming to, or you're going to hire a coach to do that for you. And you have a good relationship with body, knowing that you, this is not a representation of me and who I am. It's just my, my physique that I'm manipulating mm. and you can remove yourself from that and you don't don't, you don't get wrapped up in that identity. If you can do those things, fucking a, I think it's awesome. Mm. I think it's a, it's an amazing. Those are, those are some big things, though. They are. Those yeah. are big. Yeah. Those are big things to tackle. And uh, and I and it's and not a lot of people are aware enough to even know if they are in that place. Um, but yeah, if you are and you and you do feel confident in that, man, I, I think uh, competing is a blast. And I think it can be. I think you can do it and completely step out of it and remove yourself. Mm. Like I, I mean, I had no problem. I couldn't wait to walk away from it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I know. I was there when you did. Oh yeah. Look, if you like Mind Pump's information, if you like our content, you got to go check out mindpumpfree.com. We have a lot of guides, a lot of written content and information that can help you build more muscle, burn more body fat. We even have content for personal trainers. Again, go check it out, mindpumpfree.com. You can also follow all of us on Instagram. You can follow Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. I do want the pizza. You know, I do. I say I can't because I can't because I'm following a diet, and I'd be lying to myself if I said I don't want it. And that's why this takes a little bit more practice. And how do you get from I don't want it instead of saying I can't have it? You have to start to learn to connect how your body feels 